As we accelerate the pace of CS education adoption, we need to do more and do better. We need to rethink the what and the how of teaching computer science. I don't have all the answers. I'm not an expert. So I will only share some ideas on this note, on this point number four, and hope that they will be starting points for you to ponder over as you leave this great gathering of amazing minds. We must not, we cannot wait another 1,500 years to get to the point where the majority of the planet understands this new digital literacy. So here are some ideas that we put together on bridging the what, what to teach in computer science. And you, of course, have a lot of experience in this. Many efforts are also underway. Let kids learn by giving them access to real systems, solving real problems that they relate to, and providing real data to work on in the context that they understand this. We also need to teach them the underlying concepts of computer science, not just blind coding. And finally, we need to be able to transcend individual languages and transient tools. This third one is a very important point, and I have another slide to make that point. What you see here are the programming language adoption rates over time. Actually, how programming languages evolved over time. We started with uh, machine-driven languages. You might recognize a lot of these early languages, Fortran, uh, Basic, Pascal, C++, you know. And then the evolution of these languages continues. Uh, the important point is languages come and go. New languages will come and go. And we cannot get our kids to identify themselves with a single language or just one or two languages. Languages will be written over and over again. They will become popular. But we have to make sure that we teach our children the fundamentals so they are able to learn any language at any given point of time. And here we are going to talk about bridging the hows. To bridge this big gap in computer science education, we also need to think about the new hows, how to teach computer science. And again, there are some amazing people who are doing some compelling work. Some of this work is also funded by the NSF. As many of you know, the best teaching is when it is experiential, when it is immersive, when all or many of our senses are engaged, when we are immersed in the world that we are learning about. There is a famous saying that to learn French, you should go to France. So let us teach computer science by emphasizing project-based, real-world problem solving. And learning should also be immediate and responsive. This means not having to write code in one tool and then compiling, building, and running it in a different code. We all know how inefficient that is, how painful and frustrating that can be. And imagine doing that to our students. That is not going to be fun and engaging. So we definitely need to have new dev tools that provide us immediate feedback. And again, there are some promising efforts. Scratch is a great example of that. And more recently, Brett Victor's recent work on live coding is another example. And there are many other efforts underway as well. Learning should also be iterative. Kids learn best when they are allowed to or almost encouraged to make mistakes, to try rapid iterations, and just to see what happens. We all learn from mistakes. We get better. There is this thin zone between classwork that is too challenging and gets children anxious and classwork that is, that is too non-engaging or boring. We have to teach within this certain band. Well, the three eyes, immersive, immediate, and iterative. I didn't plan for it that way, but it ended up that way, so I think it's kind of cool. There are many other ways that we can uh, engage more students into computer science. Hackathons, collaborative coding, maker spaces, fairs, competitions, and I'm sure from your own experiences, you guys could come up with an even greater list of how to teach computer science. And CSTA, by the way, is a great platform to be sharing all the what's and the how's for everyone to learn from, for, for everyone to get on board and you know, share each other's knowledge. So now let us hear a student's, student's point of view on how they learn best and what their favorite um, learning experiences are. Can you play the third video? I like doing the 
science, so we were learning about animal adaptation. I was uh, partners with someone and we picked the woolly mammoth. We had, we had to go on the iPad and then like search it up. Oh, I would say the gold rush because we really got to do a ton of hands-on learning. We did a lot of building stuff and reading and getting to learn by ourselves, not just being fed all of the information. English honors. Oh, that class was a lot of, uh, included a lot of Socratic seminars. So we discussed a lot, gave out our ideas and our essays were really, you know, personal. The questions she asked were really interesting. Like they made you think. And that's what I like. I really like discussing and sharing my ideas. But I like seeing other perspectives on things, not just my perspective. So it gives me an open mind. We were mapping a city in India, Pune, Google Earth. You can zoom in on things and we saw it from an aerial view and we started to draw it on a huge piece of paper and, we, and then we did a raise like five by five like five buildings up and down it didn't have to be like exact but we just made up like buildings you know a teacher drew lines and we did it the coordinates for like where the northwest corner was and where the southwest corner was on the away. And I take ballet classes and I just love, love watching, watching the bigger girls dance. My high girl teacher, teacher, she's like the founder of the company and, and she is a teensy bit stricter, but she pushes me, which makes me stronger and I like like being pushed. This is where your legs should be, but it's not getting there. So I need you to get there.